Pickle, let's go to the hotline, and let's bring in the Hall of Famer. He was on the call uh, on Saturday afternoon for uh, Texas's win over Louisiana. He got he, that was right after he got done hosting uh, high school scoreboard live on Valley Sports Southwest. We're joined by the great Craig Way. Craig, uh, have you have you slept? Like uh, <laughs> I, I know I ask you this every year because I'm just always amazed because I saw you at like one o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning, and then I know you were calling the game in Austin. So uh, so are you? How well rested would you say you are right now? Well, thanks to, uh, you know, Saturday night into Sunday morning, I got a little bit caught up there. Tim, it's funny that you mention that because Friday night there was uh, there was a hotel-related issue. And the hotel where I was supposed to stay had changed ownership, lost all of the reservation stuff, oh, and was no. completely booked. So you know what I did? I got off the air. I jumped the truck, and I drove home. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got home about 4.15. It wasn't too bad. And then, and then got myself some sleep, went to the stadium and called the football game and got home Saturday night. I did fall asleep in the recliner Saturday night. Uh, I, uh, but, yeah. then, <laughs> but okay now and good to go. Yeah, if, if you hadn't, I would have had uh, some grave concerns about uh, about your health. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the week in, in, in Texas high school football that was. I think the headlines here – uh, are probably centering around the two long regular season winning streaks that came to an end uh, with Allen losing to uh, Umbla Tascacita and Denton Ryan losing to Denton Geyer. Um, my point that I just made here on, on the air is that I actually focus a lot more on the teams that won as opposed to the teams that, that lost because I feel like both of these wins are signature. Like it's going to be framed in kind of a, a, a I can't believe these teams lost at home or they lost a regular season, uh, this, that, or the other. I find myself gravitating more towards thinking, boy, this kind of proves how good a Tascacita and Geyer are. I'm interested if you follow along that same logic. Well, I do. And, and remember last week when you listed four different games and asked me which one I'd go to, and I said none of the above to see the task of Cita Allen. Part of that was uh, if I was able to pick out a game, I wanted to see if a task of Cita could really pull it off since Allen had never lost in their new digs since moving in there. And they had that regular season win streak going of 84 straight. So it was almost like, you know, I want to see it with my own eyes to believe it. That was part of it. And, and the same thing with Ryan and Geyer as well. I'll give you another one too, because we talked about it on the show on Friday, Tep, and that was Timson. You know, mm-hmm. beating Wascom in that in the cobbled together bowl, and uh, and it was a heck of a deal. And I think in all three cases, if I remember correctly, you and I were saying we're not really that concerned about the teams that lost the games. It's more of a statement about the teams that won. We know Rock is going to be fine, and and it's evidenced by your poll, still number one, and rightly so, I I believe. And and I think you know, like you said, you have no concerns about Whitney Keeling's ball club. They're going to be fine. Uh, out in East Texas, and I think the same thing it, it, with Allen. It's a little bit different because Chad Morris is trying to get something going and build something, and he has a sophomore quarterback. That might take a little bit longer, but you're right. I think it's more about the winners than it was the teams that lost those games. Talking with Craig Way, the Texas High School Football Hall of Famer, here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation at hashtag TF Today. Uh, okay, then then let's let's expand a little bit more. Um, you know, those are those are probably the three headline teams that were most impressive in in, in week three with or week two, rather, with Geyer, uh, with uh, Atascacita, and then with Tempson. Uh, who else did you come away from Friday night or Saturday or Thursday, I suppose, uh, f- feeling like that was a signature win, feeling like maybe this is a team that may be better than you thought? Uh, which of the teams did you come away from week two feeling uh, feeling pretty good about? Well, we'd be absolutely silly to say, you know, Argyle's win makes us feel better about. We already feel the way we do about Argyle that they're going to be extremely difficult to beat. Uh, that, you know, maybe in that one case, it's a little more about what uh, you know what, what what the work that'll need to go in for uh, Josh Gibson and Pleasant Grove, and then trying to get things turned for them. We know what Argyle is, and we know what the uh, you know what the, what the outcome is going to be in a lot in just about all the cases, and that's why they now have the longest winning streak in the state. Uh, you know, I think some folks were surprised that Westlake handled Trinity the way they handled them because uh, I'm with you uh, that that I believe Trinity to be a really good ball club, but you made no bones about it when you said on the air, make no mistake, right now, right now, mm-hmm. early September for what that's worth, 
Westlake is the best team in the state in 6A. So we'll see. We'll find out more as we go forward on that. But that was also kind of a little bit of a statement, I think. The other one that I'll throw out there, and and, 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 and just I'm not sure if you saw this. I know you were a little bit busy on Saturday. You had you had things to do. I, I, I forget what. Uh, but Cy Park beating Cy Fair in the way that they did – uh, absolutely grinding them uh, to dust, a really impressive victory for the young program there in Cy, Cy Fair ISD. And, and that, I think, speaks to a, a broader topic, which is that we are now living in an age, I think, I think we might be living in the golden age of newer programs, that these programs are getting so much better so much quicker. There's no longer that six, seven, eight, ten year build to get to contention. Instead, you got teams that are starting in three years. I mean, you look at the Shadow Creeks. I think a lot of it, in a lot of ways, started with what uh, Brock did. Of course, they were an interesting situation where they had already had a, a long-established, successful athletic program. But it seems to me that we are living in a golden age of new programs that are getting really good right away. Yep, and and I was thinking of Brock when you talked about that. I always think about something that uh, Dr. Charles Bright, the executive director of the UIL, said uh, of Brock in that in that run that they had to win the state title being a, a startup and, and new to the whole thing the 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 system and all of the elements were in place for success there and i think it's the same thing at side park i think it's the same thing at several of the other uh so brisland is another one that that hadn't been around that long and 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 yet is experiencing some, some success because the population structure and the way that the school district meets out depending on you know its attendance zone and, and requirements and things of that nature they these systems are set up for success shadow creek is probably the poster child for it so there's an op, there's a real opportunity there for startup programs to not be thought of as expansion teams the way i mean we're seeing first year programs get into the playoffs we saw that down in the greater austin area with leander glenn and pflugerville weiss you know, we, we were seeing startup programs in their first year reach the playoffs. So maybe that's a little bit of a benchmark as well, seeing how competitive the programs can be at such an early age. All right, I'm going to play your favorite game that I know you're going to spring on me on Thursday, so I'll just get ahead of it. I'm going to give you three games. I'm going to make you pick one that you got to go to unless you've got some wild card that I'm not thinking of. Uh, you can either go to Lake Travis and Rockwall, you can either go to Galena Park North Shore and Spring Westfield, or you can go to Salina and Argyle. Where are you teleporting to? You know, Salina has been pretty impressive what they've done. It, 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 you know, what, how they fare, win or lose against Argyle, will go a long way. But if you're you're telling me to choose one of those, probably going to go with Lake Travis Rockwall. I had Hank Carter on my show this morning, and uh, he's got real concerns about what Rockwall can do offensively, clearly, when you can put that many points on Jesuit and do that. Uh, you've got somebody's attention. But obviously, Lake Travis – uh, will will have Rockwall's attention as well, and I give you another one. I mean, we'll we'll see how uh, Austin LBJ does against La Vega. Mm -hmm. That's number three and number four in the state, so that's I think that's worthy of uh, watching as well this week. That's going to be two teams that are going to get physical with one another. Um, uh, let me ask you briefly about what you saw on Saturday. There, um, you 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 called Texas's. Uh, I would say rather impressive, rather roundly rounded off very good no sharp corners type performance against uh louisiana it was it was very impressive from from where i sat i'm, I'm interested in, in what your takeaways were from texas's win over louisiana well i you know I, I think it went i don't know if it went completely according to plan the way that uh, that sark wanted it to go but i know he was largely pleased uh with how his running game looked, how his defensive line looked, uh, the attitude his guys had uh, taking on a really good ball club. So I think he was pleased with that. He, he did come away with it saying that they had concerns about things with the offensive line and some unnecessary penalties. He didn't like the fact they gave up a late first half drive for a field goal in that late drive where Louisiana did not score, but they kept the ball a long time. So there were there were some things. It's it's a healthy sign, though, Tap, when the head coach, after a win of 20 points over a ranked team, is saying, we've got areas we got to clean up. And he's right, because they do, because they're going to face 
uh, a talented, if kind of unheralded, Arkansas team on Saturday night in Fayetteville, where I don't know if you've heard, they don't particularly love Texas. Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard tell of these hogs and, and their <laughs> thoughts on on the Longhorns. Finally, Craig, I'll let you go with this. You you may or may not know that Dave Campbell's Texas football crew is uh, packing up and heading west tomorrow afternoon. We're flying to El Paso uh, to catch uh, El Paso High and El Paso Socorro on Thursday night at R.R. Jones Stadium. Um, I, I know it's been a minute since Texas played out there. I think 08 was the last time they played in uh, in in the Sun Bowl. Um, they're taking on UTEP. Uh, any recommendations for us as we head to El Paso? Well, uh, you know, the scenery is always beautiful out there. I enjoyed uh, doing football games. I've done basketball games out there before. I think you're going to, uh, you know, a great site there at the stadium there at El Paso High. And then going up to the top of the hill at the end of the Continental Divide and looking down into the bowl, that's a really cool deal. That used to be one of our uh, cheesecake natural setup shot in the old days of high school <laughs> extra when we went there we always wanted to do that and then and for your your dining pleasure i'm going to recommend 40s mexican elder restaurant there on chelsea which okay. is a, a good little spot so el paso is a place that's near and dear to my heart there he is he's craig way he's the texas high school football hall of famer you can hear him on the horn in austin every weekday uh and then you can also catch him on high school scoreboard live uh, this Friday on Bally Sports Southwest starting at 11 o'clock alongside myself and Rick Renner. And then listen to him uh, on the, uh, the, the, the the Texas Sports Network or Texas what, what Texas Radio Network uh, presented by Learfield, I think. You, you've, I heard you say it like three or four times on the air. <laughs> I was, I was going to write it down. I didn't. Um, but here Yeah, the, the uh, Longhorn Radio Network Learfield. There you go. The Longhorn Radio Network uh, by Learfield. Uh, you can hear him call uh, Texas and Arkansas, old Southwest Conference rivals, going out at, on Saturday. Craig, appreciate your time, my friend, and I will talk to you on Thursday. Hey, safe travels. Have a great trip out there. I promise. <laughs> Bye, Craig. There he goes. Bye. Craig White, the Texas High School Hall of Famer, joins us every Tuesday here on Texas Football. Today, I knew he would. I knew he would have some. Some some insights on El Paso. That's a man, Recommendations, yeah. That's a when man you can trust. I'll pull back the <laughs> the curtain there when I picked it up. He's like, "Where are you going this week?" And I said, "It's El Paso week." And he was like, "Oh, I forgot. That's so exciting." So he's pumped for us, which we knew he would be. We knew <laughs> he would be. So we appreciate Craig Way hopping on with us. We're Texas Football today. We're here every weekday at noon on TexasFootball.com, talking football on the Lone Star State. You can follow us on Twitter at DCTF, like us on Facebook, facebookcom slash Campbells. Follow us on Instagram, instagramcom Campbells. and of course, see us at TexasFootball.com. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.